few simple ingredients that you probably have um, in your house already most of the time. Um, we're using four tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. You can use a white vinegar if you don't have apple cider vinegar. We're using a tablespoon of olive oil, canola oil or vegetable oil is good. We, I like to use olive oil because it's really good for your heart and your hair and your fingernails um, and your blood and your taste buds. So we have some olive oil here. We're using a teaspoon and a half of chili powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and we're just gonna squeeze a little lime in there. I like to just squeeze it through my fingers here, just leaving your fingers open a little bit to catch any seeds, but you don't need any fancy contraptions to squeeze citrus. We're gonna get that in the bowl, and then we're gonna whisk it together. I have this adorable little whisk that my daughter gave me. Uh, and we're just gonna whisk those ingredients together. I also like to add a little dash of honey. So I'm going to put a little tiny bit of honey in here. Just sweeten it up, not too much, but just to take a little bit of the acidity out of it. Okay. We're gonna grab our bowl of goodness, add our dressing in here, and give it a little stir. Now, it's better if you give it a chance to sit for at least a half hour. This is actually one of those dishes that is often better even the next day. So you could make this in advance um, if you're going to a party or you're having a party. This is actually something I love to have in the refrigerator when I'm working, or when I'm busy to have something healthy to grab in the refrigerator to either take with me or so I don't make, you know, when you get busy and you're like, what am I gonna have for lunch? And you just grab something easy. It's great to have healthy options in there. And then you don't, you don't go off the deep end a little bit. So here is our beautiful Southwestern bean salad. Now, if you will just hold on, uh, we're going to talk to Chef Deborah, who's going to tell you some alternatives, some substitutions. If you don't have any of these uh, ingredients or if you want to mix it up a little bit. And then Chef Kisha is going to chef it up and she's going to tell you if you want to spend a little more time and make your salad and put it to the next level. She's going to give you some tips to do that. Thanks for spending some time with me. Hi, thanks, Victoria. That was beautiful. What a gorgeous salad. I am so happy to be here supporting Feast. It's a wonderful organization uh, impacting, it's such incredible impact on communities that it serves. I, I came through Wellness in the Schools. It's another great organization that partners with Feast and these organizations go into communities and they really make changes, uh, nutrition education, food access, sustainable support systems. So it's wonderful work, it's so important these days and I'm very proud to be part of it. Uh, today I'm going to address some of the substitution, ingredient substitution uh, possibilities that Victoria raised with her a magnificent, magnificent, uh, colorful, healthy, fresh salad, the Southwestern bean salad. Uh, as far as beans are concerned, I couldn't even think of a bean that wouldn't work in this recipe, so, so go for it. My only thought was maybe lentils, I don't know, but even lentils, why not? Um, so try any bean you have, I think that'll be fine. Uh, I really think about not worrying so much about what vegetables are going in. So if I don't have corn or if I don't have bell pepper, I'm gonna open my refrigerator, I'm gonna pull out everything that I have, and it can be a half of carrot or a quarter of a cucumber. Uh, those are like the odds and ends that are perfect for a chopped salad. So I just reached in and I found, I have this uh, a yellow squash, I have a zucchini, a green zucchini, and these um, can be just small dice, about the size of the beans, that you want everything more or less the same size so that it's comfortable in your mouth. Uh, and they're beautiful, they're colorful, they add freshness, they add uh, moisture, and that's what you're looking for. I also, I found these uh, gorgeous radishes at the farmer's market. The color is insane. They'll look so pretty in your salad, really brighten it up. They have a crunch, they'll hold their shape, they can handle a strong dressing. Uh, a celery is another wonderful go-to. Celery also keeps its shape. It has fabulous uh, mouthfeel and crunch and, and gives a big burst of, of um, freshness when you bite into it. 
holds up to dressing. So perfect, always for chopped salad, I love that. Uh, what else? For Southwest, I why not do um, avocado if you have this little cutie avocado? Uh, the lime zest, the lime and lime juice and lime zest, because you want a real full punch, is a perfect for that Southwestern flavor profile. So you really want to add that in if you have lime. I, I highly recommend it with the salad dressing. Um, if you don't have lime, forget about it. Don't worry about it. You, you know, you'll get your acid from your cider vinegar. So um, don't stress over things you don't have and just have fun with what you do have. Uh, instead of cilantro, and cilantro is classic in a Southwestern flavor profile, right? But some people don't care for cilantro. It's not my ultimate favorite. I, I'm getting used to it though. Um, I would add parsley. I love parsley. It's got a nice bitterness, a freshness. Just chop it up, throw it on in. Uh, the only thing I really wouldn't mess with with this recipe is the chili powder in this in the um, dressing because the chili powder is really what's defining it. It's that's the Southwest vibe that that you know that you're going for in this salad. It adds that smokiness and an earthiness and a, and a little bit of that heat and kick. That's um, that's fun. So though that's what I recommend, and I hope you enjoy your salad. Kishal, what do you got? Please let us know. Hi, Chef Kisha here. So you've learned how to make this beautiful summer salad. What Victoria demoed was a very simple way to prepare this recipe. What I like to show you is how to amp up the flavors just a little bit. So if you have an extra couple of minutes on hand, this is the way to go. One of the simplest things that you can do to this recipe is start off with beans that you've cooked yourself. I promise you, you are going to taste the difference between the canned beans and the beans that you actually prepared at home. You can also acidulate your onions. This means that once your onions are chopped, you simply soak them in whatever acid is called for in the recipe. In our case, it's either lime juice or vinegar. Acidulating your onion will cut down on its bitterness and it will make it more palatable for those finicky eaters that you might have at home. Personally, I would add minced garlic to this recipe. And remember, when you're mincing garlic, a little bit goes a long way. Once my recipe is prepared, I might sprinkle it with a little bit of cotija cheese or parmesan. But if you decide to do that, remember to cut back on your salt. If there's only one thing you can do to amp up this recipe, roast your corn. Roasting vegetables is probably the best thing that you can do to any recipe. Roasting your corn is probably the best way to bring out its natural flavors, especially if it's canned corn, because remember, it's been sitting in that liquid for a while, and it kind of tends to lose its flavor. So here are the spices that we're going to be using for our roasted corn, and I have about an eighth of a teaspoon of each of these spices here. We have cumin powder, smoked paprika, chili powder, Himalayan or pink sea salt, freshly ground black pepper, and extra virgin olive oil. So let's jump right in. Here I have my corn, which is still frozen. I don't have to worry about thawing it out in this recipe. We're gonna add our olive oil. We're gonna give it a quick stir just to make sure everything's coated. We wanna make sure everything's coated so when we add our spices, it'll cling on to each of the kernels. So that looks good. So here we go with our spices, and I'm just going to get them all in there. Mix it around a bit more. And that looks good. So now we're going to get this into our pan. What I have here is a pan with a little bit of parchment paper. I'm going to take a little bit of cooking spray. Even though there's oil in this, we really don't want the corn to stick to our surface. So we're going to give it a little bit of insurance by giving it just a quick spray. We're going to pour our corn right onto our pan. And we're also going to make sure that it's a single layer. So, after 20 minutes in a 400 degree oven, this is what we have. And if you see here, some of the edges are a little darker than the rest, 
but that's okay. That's just going to give you a whole lot of texture and a whole lot of yumminess. So I really do hope that you try this recipe at home, and I really do hope that you roast this corn because I tell ya, it's so good. <laughs> Yummy. So good.